Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss experiment 2, free fall and projectile motion. Before we begin, please make sure that you have the laboratory manuals and the Jota book with you. The manual will serve as a reference and to help you to follow along with the video. You, you will be writing your notes in the Jota books. In the Jota, you need to have the objective of the experiment, the summary of the procedure, either in words or diagram, and table for data collection. Gravitational force is acting on free-falling bodies and projectile, pulling it downwards. So, free-falling bodies and projectile will accelerate downwards with a gravitational acceleration. In this experiment, we are going to use free-falling motion and projectile motion to determine the value of the gravitational acceleration. The experimental setup is shown in figure 2.1. At the top, you have the electromagnet and a steel ball attached to the electromagnet. At the bottom, you have a trap door. The electromagnet and the trap door is attached, is connected to the timer. When the ball is released, it will trigger the start of the timer. When the ball hit the trap door, the timer will stop. The timer will give the falling time of the steel ball. The equation, the equation S equals to UT plus half AT square is used to describe the motion of the steel ball. At the very start, the steel ball is at rest. So the initial velocity of the steel ball is zero. When the ball is released, the ball is traveling downwards because displacement is a vector quantity. The displacement of the steel ball is negative h. The gravitational force acting on the steel ball pulling it downwards. So the steel ball will have an acceleration. The acceleration of the steel ball is taken to be negative g. If we substitute all the value into the equation, we get the equation of h negative h equals to negative half gt square. And we can cancel out the negative on both sides of the equation, gt square. This will give us the equation half gt square. If we, if we compare the equation with a straight line equation, the h will represent the y axis. The t square will represent the x axis because we don't have c so means that we don't have y intercept. So the graph should start at zero. Plotting h against t square will give us a straight line graph and if we choose two points along the lines and we draw a right angle triangle connecting the two points we can, we can calculate the gradient of the line or the gradient of the graph using the equation y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. The gradient of the graph is actually equals to half of g. Rearranging the equation, we get g equals to 2 times the gradient of the graph. But please pay attention to the units of the height. Make sure that you convert your final answer to standard international unit or SI unit. Before we continue, I would suggest that you pause the video, open the manuals and go to page 7. Read the procedure on free fall motion. After you have finished reading the procedure, you can come back to the video again. If you have read the procedure, you will realize that in the experiment, you need to manipulate the height. The height is going to be the manipulative variables, and then you are going to record the falling time. The falling time is going to be the responding variables. These two values need to be recorded in a table. This is the table that you are going to use to record the data in the experiment. Make sure when you write the variable name height, you must include the unit of the variables. 
the unit for height is centimeter, the unit for time is second, the unit for time square is second square. I left out the plus minus section here blank so that you can input the sensitivity of your measuring instrument. For each height, you are going to repeat the experiment for falling time twice and then find the average. And then you are going to square the average to get t square. Now we are going to continue with the demonstration of the experimental setup. This is the trap door. As you can see, it has a white circle on it and two inputs where you can connect the wire to the input. So this is your trap door, this is your timer or digimeter as it's written here. You can switch on your timer and then press the function button and go to start and stop. Input A is your start trigger, it has two input jack and input B is your stop trigger, it has two input jack as well. The, this is the electromagnet. Before you can attach the steel ball, you need to press the top of the electromagnet and it will hold the steel ball to the electromagnet. To release the steel ball, just press the front thingy of the electromagnet. Now we are going to show you how to secure the electromagnet to the retort stem. We are going to use the wire to connect the electromagnet, the red and the black wire. We are going to connect the wire to the input A or the start of the timer. The other one goes to the bottom like that. And then we are going to connect the trap door to the timer. So the trap door is going to input B or the stop trigger. One at the top and one at the bottom. Now we are going to place the trap door right below the electromagnet. Make sure the steel ball fall exactly on the white circle on the trap door. Now we are going to switch on the, the timer and go to start and stop by pressing the function button. And we are going to measure the height from the trap door to the release of the electromagnet or from the trap door to the steel ball. If the timer is running, just press the reset button to set it to zero again. As you can see in the video, I'll show it again. So you attach the steel ball, the timer is running, set, press reset, release the steel ball, by pressing the front metal in front of the electromagnet and it will give you the time, the falling time. 